Chapter Seven of Jetta of the Lowlands by Ray Cummings. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Behind the sealed door, there was a moment when I think I might have escaped unseen from that archway, but I was too amazed at Spawn's appearance to think of my own situation. I had believed that Perona was plotting against Spawn, meeting these bandits in this secret place. I had just heard them planning to attack Spawn's mine, to rob it of the treasures, doubtless, which I knew were stored there. But I realize now it was not a plot against Spawn. He had come here swiftly to join Perona and tell him that I, their intended victim, was missing. He had greeted the bandit guard by name. He seemed, indeed, as well known to these bandits as Perona himself. They stood now in a group some thirty feet away from me. I could hear their excited voices perfectly clear. My instruments were off, but I recall that as I listened to Spawn, I was also aware of the tingle of the electrode band on my chest, Hanley vigorously calling me back to find out why I had so summarily disconnected. I took him to his room, Spawn was explaining excitedly. The devil... Why should I have sealed him in? How could I? He is no child. De Beer laughed caustically. And so he has walked away from you. I think I am a fool. To mix myself with you two? Perona retorted. I have made you rich, De Beer. Think what you like. Tonight is the end of our partnership. Only you do what I have told you tonight. Ah, how can I? Your American has flown his trap. This guard, this Gutierrez, as Spawn has called him, was listening with interest. De Beer's several other men were gathered there. I felt myself safe where I was, for the moment at least. I cut Hanley in. Chief, they're closer. Spawn has come. They've missed me. I'll relay what they're saying, but you step it down. There's too much volume. You're all right, Phil. Thank heaven for that. Something blew my vacuums. Chief, listen. Here they are. Perona. But he will be back in the garden now, no doubt, with Jetta. De Beer. Ah, the little Jetta. So she is there. Spawn, not in years have you spoken of your daughter. A young lady now, I suppose. Is it so? Spawn cursed. We leave her out of this. You follow the Senor's plan. Come to your house? You think the bird will be there for me to seize? Yes, Perona put in. You go there in an hour. Then to the mine. Spawn undoubtedly was in this plot to attack his mine, he said. At the mine we have arranged everything. Damn this American. But for Perona I would not bother with him. But you will bother, Perona interjected. De Beer laughed again. I would be witless, could I not figure this. Here is a young man, and so handsome he has frightened you with this little Jetta. Is that it, Perona? Jealous, huh? I had been holding the image finder so that Hanley might see them. Hanley's voice rattled my ear grid. Phil, get away from there. Look, De Beer is searching. De Beer had, a moment before, spoken quietly aside to Gutierrez. And now, three or four of the men were spreading out, poking about with small hand flashes, searching for me, the possibility that I might be here, eavesdropping. Hanley repeated vehemently, Phil, they'll find you. Get out of there. The way is still open. Gutierrez was approaching the archway, but I lingered a moment longer. Chief, you heard about that girl, Jetta, Spawn's daughter? I stopped, Perona was saying. Spawn, was Jetta still in her room? You did not untie her? No. And gagged? Suppose the Americano was back there now. She might call to him, and he would release her. De Beer, how do you know he is not around here, listening? With the assumption that I might be within hearing, De Beer tried to trap me. Gutierrez, at a signal now, suddenly dashed through the archway 
and planted himself on the path outside. The other searchers spread their rays. The rocks all about me were lighted, but my niche was still untouched. De Beer, if he is not around here, Perona, he could not have followed me. I was too careful. I was murmuring, Chief, they've got the girl. Phil, you get away. Go to Mark's. Stay with him. But, Chief, that Jetta, I... Keep out of this. You're only one. You can't help any. I've sent for the Puerto Rico patrol ship to handle this. Chief, I'm going back to Spawn's. No. I cut off abruptly. In another moment, I would have been discovered. The searchers were headed directly for me. I moved, crouching, back along the inner wall of the archway. The moon was momentarily behind a cloud. It was black under the arch, and out front it was so dim I could only see the faint blob of Gutierrez's standing figure and the spot of his flashlight. Perona, he's not around here, De Beer. This is foolish. Spawn, he could have gone anywhere, maybe a walk around the village. Perona, go back home, Spawn. De Beer will come. Their voices faded as I moved away. A searching bandit behind me poked with his light into the crevice where a moment before I had been crouching. I moved faster. Only Gutierrez was now in front of me. He was at the far end of the arch. I could slip past and still be fifty feet from him if I could avoid his swinging little light beam. I was running now, chancing that he would hear me. I was on the path. I could see it vaguely. From behind me came a sizzling flash, and then the ting of the flying needle as it missed me by a foot. The Americano, he goes there. Another shot. The shouts of the bandits in the archway. A turmoil back there. But it was all behind me. I leaped sideways off the path as Gutierrez's small light beam swept it. I ran stumbling through a stubble of boulders, around an upstanding rock spire, back to the path again. There were other shots, then De Beer's voice, faint by distance. Stop, fools. We will alarm the village. The landing field can see our shots from here. Take it easy. You can't get them. The turmoil quieted. I went around a bend in the path, running swiftly. Pursuit was behind me. I could hear them coming. It was a run of no more than ten minutes to the junction where, down the slope, I could see the lights of the landing field. The glow of the village was ahead of me. Then I was in its outskirts, occasional dark houses, deserted streets. I slowed to a fast walk. I was breathless, panting in the heat. I heard no pursuit now, but Spawn and the rest of them, doubtless, were after me. Would they head back for Spawn's Inn? I thought they would. But I could beat them back there. I was sure there was no shorter route than this I was taking. Would they use their flyer? That would not gain them any time, what with launching it and landing for so short a flight. An abandoned flyer could not very well land unseen or unnoticed, even in somnolent Narita. I reached the main section of the village. There were occasional lights and pedestrians. My haste was noticeable, but I was not accosted. There seemed no police about. I recalled Perona's remark that he had attended to that. My electrode was tingling. I had been running again. I slowed down. Chief? Phil, his voice carried relief. You got away. Yes, I'm in the village. Go to President Marks. No, I'm headed for Spawn's. They're all behind me. I can get there a few minutes ahead of them. I panted an exclamation, incoherently but frankly, about Jetta. I'm going to get her out of there. Phil, what in hell? I told him. So you've fallen in love with a girl, entangled? Chief. Go after her, Phil. Got her bound and gagged, have they? Going to marry her to this Perona, like the Middle Ages. I had never seen the side of Hanley. 
Get her if you want her. Get her out of there. Take her to Mark's. No, I wouldn't trust anybody in Narita. Take her into the uplands behind the village. But keep away from that mine. Have you got flash fuses? Yes. I was within sight of Spawn's house. The street was dim and deserted. I was running again. I panted. I'm almost at Spawn's. Good when it's over. Whatever happens up there at the mine, then signal the patrol. Yes. I reached Spawn's front gate. The house and front garden were dark. Use your fuses, Phil. What colors? I have red and blue. I'll talk to the patrol ship again. Tell them to watch for you. Red and blue. Two short red flashes and a long blue. Right, Chief. I'm here at Spawn's, cutting off. Come back on when you can. His voice was anxious again. I'll wait here. All right. I cut silent. I ran through the front doorway of Spawn's Inn. The living room was dim and empty. Which way was Jetta's room? I could only guess. I had a few minutes, perhaps, before my pursuers would arrive. I reached the inner patio garden. The moon was well out from under the clouds now. The patio shimmered, a silent, deserted fairyland. Jetta! I called it softly. Then louder, Jetta! Spawn's house was fairly large and rambling. There were so many rooms. Jetta was gagged. How could she answer me? But I had no time to search for her. Jetta! And then came her voice. Philip? Jetta, which way? Where are you? Here, this way, in my room. A window and a door near the pergola. Jetta! Yes, I am in here. They tied me up. Not so loud, Phil. Father will hear you. He's gone out. I reached her garden door, turned its handle, rattled the door, shoved frantically with my shoulder. The metal door was firmly sealed. End of chapter 7